Beehive candy boards. This is my take on it. I'm going to show you how I build it. Coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. What I'm going to be building in this video are some candy boards. Uh, over winter on the hives. Winter is coming and there's a lot of different ways you can make them. Everybody's pretty much got their own idea. Just like uh, a lot of people have their own candy recipes and I'm not going to get into that in this video. Just uh, on making the frame and how I do it. You kind of see here this is a little bit different from what maybe you've seen before. But uh, it will not sag. So when the load gets in there with this cross piece in there it won't sag. We got vents on the corners. We've got uh, this is not only ventilation up here, but it's also a winter bee escape in case the lower entrance gets covered and plugged up with snow or something else. We're going to get into exactly how I build this and what all the dimensions are and you can build your own. Okay, the sizes I'm going to go over here for a standard 10 frame Langstroth. You would have to uh, narrow it up a little bit if you have an 8 frame. Uh, your end pieces will be 16 and a quarter long and I've made these two and a half inches deep the sides will be also two and a half inches wide and 19 and an eighth long next thing I did was if you look at the end of this right here hopefully the camera will focus on that I cut a 1 16th inch deep rabbit a half inch deep all the way down all four pieces. What this does is when the wire sits on here and is stapled down and you set this on your hive it will not leave a gap there. If you just uh, would staple the wire directly to the bottom when you set the uh, frame on your hive there will be a little bit of a gap all the way around and it will lead to a draft and we don't need that. I'd rather rely on my uh, quilt box and everything I'll have on top rather than have any extra drafts in there. And generally by the time you put this in, uh, it would be so late in the season the bees would not be have time to go and try to seal that crack up. Next thing you will need are some, also, uh, these are not two and a half wide, these are two and three eighths wide to allow for this rabbit to give you a little bit of playroom. These pieces have a 45 degree miter on each end from end to end or four inches and I'll show you how that all goes in here shortly. On one end of your piece you'll need to drill a one inch hole or I use a one inch hole because that's what was already in the drill press uh, in the center of one of the end in which case it'll be the front of the uh, candy board and I just pretty much centered it both ways. That's your uh, winter bee escape and if you uh, find that you don't need that you can always put a cork in it. Now we'll get on to the build part. Okay, on, one, on both ends of your 16 and a quarter inch pieces, you're going to need to have a rabbit that is three quarter of an inch in and three eighths deep. You'll need one on both ends of both end pieces, like so. I have kind of an assembly jig I use for when I'm building super, so I'm going to make use of it here as well. I'm using tight bond 3 for glue, and I'm using inch and a half galvanized staples.
So all you're really doing here is building a basic box. Just want to make sure that you have your rabbits for your wire up on all four sides and don't do one of them backwards. If you want to be exotic, you could do dovetail or box joint corners, but I don't feel that it's necessary for these. Oh, there you have your basic box. Next on the end, opposite the winter entrance. I do this in each corner. That gives allows for ventilation up through which uh, will then go into my quilt board. You want to have that flush with your wire base in there because you are going to be hitting it with a staple. Using a clamp isn't absolutely necessary, it just makes it a little easier. And then here on the other end, where your winter entrance is, we're going to make a piece that looks like this. And that gets centered right over where the entrance is. And I, the way I do this, just to make your life a little bit easier, is I have a 90 degree, and these are actually made for making picture frames. I use it for uh, this. Makes it a little bit easier to get staples in it without it moving around on that outside miter corner. This is what I like about it, it holds everything nice and tight. that out of the frame. It's just some glue on your other miter surfaces here. Yeah, I could use a glue brush, but I like using my finger. Center that over your opening. Edges up flush. And it'll look like this. Now I need to add a cross piece in here. Which I don't have one cut. I'm gonna have to go cut one, but it is 14 and 5 eighths. These are just uh, three quarter inch square pieces of uh, scrap. I put this right in the center. Just measure down 11 inches. Or I should say 10 inches, roughly. Nine and seven eighths if you want to get split hairs, and you want that flush with your rabbit.
try not to blow a staple off the top when you do it. Okay, next will be cutting the wire put on it. That's always fun because it comes in a really tight roll. You know, not everybody's got a saw fence to wedge it underneath, but if you've got somebody that can stand on the other side while you unroll it, and kind of try to roll it backwards a little bit, it'll make it a little bit easier to handle. We'll still want to curl, but... Okay, the wire needs to be cut to fit inside your rabbits that are on the bottom here. What I do is get a mark of where I need to cut. This stuff will tear you up if you're not careful. It's, I really should have gloves on. This is half inch hardware cloth, galvanized hardware cloth is what it's called. I'm just cutting it with tin snips. Try to get this flattened out a little more. You need to get your length. Then this gets stapled to the frame with quarter inch narrow crown staples that are a half inch long. Just kind of get things centered there. I start in one corner. I missed the wire. I'll go up to the other end, keeping it straight, making sure it all fits inside the rabbit. Keeping it as tight as possible. And when I'm happy with that, I'll start going down the sides. This other corner, once again, as tight as possible. And I go about every three or, three or four inches. And then I also go down through the center. And I, near the vents I also put a couple. I don't know that it's really necessary. I just do it. And by the entrance I'll do a couple. Okay, there you have it. One candy board. Fill that up with the uh, way I do it is I uh, mix my candy, I pour it in there over and on a sheet of plastic. Um, I don't put newspaper in the bottom. Once in a while I may do wax paper, but generally I just set this on plastic, pour my candy in there, and let it set for a couple weeks. It'll turn hard as a brick, and I can just pick this up and set it on the hive when I need it. Okay, so this is my take on building a candy board. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of different ways to do it out there, a lot of different methods. This is what uh, I find will work best for me. And, of course, I've got the shop here to do it, which um, always helps. And it was a nice little rainy day woodworking project to get ready for uh, the upcoming cold weather and to keep the bees happy and well-fed during the winter. So, if you got anything out of this or liked it, I always appreciate getting that thumbs up. It helps the channel. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. 
next to that subscribe button is a little bell. If you click that bell, you'll be notified when we post another video. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop. We'll see you in the next one.